Welcome to our review on energy and life processes. So first thing we actually need to think about then is where do different organisms get their energy from? So if we think about plants first of all, hopefully we remember that they're going to use the sunlight energy which they trap in their chloroplasts and then they use that light energy in order to make larger molecules which then contain the stored energy for the plant. Animals it's slightly different. What actually has to happen there for the animals to get the energy is that they've got to eat organic molecules that contain the energy if you like and they do so by eating plants or other animals. Now all living things actually need energy and the reason for that is because all life processes need energy. So the kind of things that we might be using this energy for in a living thing would be building larger molecules from those smaller ones. It might be to contract muscles so that we can actually move. It could be if we're one of these warm blooded creatures to control our body temperature as well. So all of these different life processes actually need energy and therefore we've got to get it from somewhere. What we're going to do now then is have a look at these three key areas of energy usage in an organism in a little bit more detail. So first up we've got building large molecules. So what we actually find then is in our bodies we're going to have these amino acids which we've taken in through our diet and we need to build those into proteins. So small molecule into a large molecule there. Now in order to get some amino acids our body actually has to make them itself as well. So that means that we're starting off with the basics of an amino acid which would be the sugars and the nitrates to make the amino acid in the first place. In addition, we can use those sugar molecules from our digestive system in order to make things like glycogen, which is our storage salt sugar in animals. In addition, plants do a similar thing, except they make starch to store their sugar. Finally, we can actually make lipids as well, which are important because we do need them for insulation and protection of our organs. And we make those by joining fatty acids and glycerol together. Second one was muscle contraction. Now, obviously all over our body, then we've got different muscles and each of those muscles actually controls the movement of different parts of our body. And the only way that we can actually move those different limbs, etc., is by having the muscles contract. And to bring about muscle contraction, we again need energy. The last one I mentioned was controlling body temperature. So when we think about the warm blooded animals, so things like birds and mammals, then what we need to do is actually control our body temperature by releasing heat energy from the food we eat. That's what keeps us nice and warm. Now, that does mean that we need to obviously take in more food in order to generate that energy than organisms that don't do this, things like reptiles, for example. So obviously controlling our body temperature is one of those main ways that we will be using a significant amount of energy. Now, the way we actually make this energy is through a process called respiration. And there are two different types of respiration that we need to know about. First one is what's called aerobic respiration, and this one needs oxygen. So we'll find aerobic respiration occurs where we've got plenty of oxygen available and what we'll see is that the glucose reacts with the oxygen and one of the products that we will get is energy. Second type of respiration that we need to know about is anaerobic respiration. Now this one doesn't actually need oxygen to in order for it to take place. So what we find is if there's not enough oxygen for aerobic respiration to occur, then we use anaerobic respiration because it still gives us the energy we need.